next. So let's start with Michael. Thank you, Corey. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm Michael Baker. Um, I will be talking about heat and homelessness. And this project is really personal for me. Um, I moved here from Fort Myers, Florida. So I have a lot of experience um, with heat, as well as the unequal distribution of wealth in a single city. Um, when I moved to Pacific Beach, I had no AC. As a climate activist, my one true vice is air conditioning. Um, so, however, when I got to Pacific Beach, the level of homelessness is what really shocked me. Um, but that was nothing compared to Sacramento, um, where our cohort traveled to the California Adaptation Forum. During the day, we'd discuss plans for California's green future, and at night, we would walk over and around people looking for something to eat and a place to sleep. It just didn't sit right with me. So I started to look at different climate action plans around the country and adaptation strategies and found this huge gap in addressing vulnerable groups. So this innovation seems to leave behind this particular group, which is rarely mentioned and only found in the appendix. I used data analysis tools to build a heat vulnerability index for San Diego County and incorporated homelessness so that cities can better direct resources to those that most need it and can construct more efficient policies and strategies needed with climate change. So the public health imperative that I'm trying to address, um, there's a clear gap so um, vulnerability assessments should include the most vulnerable groups. So using homelessness as a proxy for that vulnerability is something I looked into. Um, neighborhoods, or in this case, census tracts with high density homelessness represent more vulnerable neighborhoods. So it's, it was important for me to recognize and ultimately try and reduce this systematic exposure that we see within uh, major cities and in San Diego in particular. Um, and using uh, this analysis and this assessment, you can figure out where aid is needed most or more quickly during a heat event. So a little bit about extreme heat. Extreme heat is defined as an extended period of high temperatures and humidity. Heat is actually the number one killer out of all weather-related phenomena combined in the United States. A third of the global population lives in an area that experiences conditions that contribute to heat-related mortality. And around 600 people die every year in the U.S. just from heat. And that zone of 30% is expected to grow with climate change. According to the IPCC AR5 report, human influence on climate has more than doubled heat wave probability in some areas. California, especially the southern region, is expected to see more frequent, more intense, and longer lasting events. So what does that mean for health? The negative impacts of heat include cramps, fainting, heat exhaustion, dehydration, and ultimately death if prolonged exposure continues. A recent study found that heat critically impacts seven vital organs through 27 different physiological pa pa <clears throat> excuse me, pathways. Um, so knowing how heat affects health is important because it impacts every person. However, the impacts are not felt equally. So a little snapshot from the CDC, uh, Natural Disasters and Severe Weather section. Over 8,000 heat-related deaths were reported over an 11-year span. 90% of these deaths occurred during the summer months. Three states, California included, accounted for almost half of all of these heat deaths. Highest death rates were found among elderly and minorities. So already I started to see that the heat burden seems systematic by design. So when talking about vulnerability, um, we're talking about the combination of well-known risk factors, which can include medical conditions, socioeconomic status, including income and education, as well as elderly and living alone. So I included a picture of a social vulnerability index, which details some of these risk factors. So moving from right to left, you see that overall vulnerability is a combination of many different factors, but they can all be grouped into um, fewer categories. So the heat vulnerability index, which I created, incorporates all of most of these factors as well as environmental pollution data. I also included data on homelessness, um, specifically population density. Um, San Diego has the fourth highest homeless population in the United States. Risk factors of vulnerability are found among this population at high rates, including high rates of chronic disease and often mental illness. 
Veterans also have an added burden of exposure to war and represent 10% of unsheltered homeless in San Diego. So heat um, exposure is perceived by the individual. And I really try to avoid generalizing. Um, and it's important to avoid generalizing when discussing these vulnerable groups. But it's also necessary for policy. Um, and homeless individuals face a 1.6 times greater rate of mortality from heat than non-homeless individuals with similar characteristics. So just by being homeless puts you at that rate that's greater. So the heat vulnerability index, um, the objective of this was to assess spatially where to intervene to reduce heat burden specific to San Diego County. Um, I used these variables which represent risk factors um, and I also included an analysis on where homeless are and how dependent that spatial distribution is on vulnerability. Um, so I used 28 well-known physical and social variables along with homeless population counts. And what was cool about San Diego is that there's 627 census tracts, which allows for this really localized analysis. And I also found there is a need for better information on homelessness um, in that particular sector, which can include better counts, um, better you know, death statistics and health statistics in general. Okay, so I collected variables um, from my chair, Tariq. He helped me out. Um, they were mostly uh, in percent of population. So in order to standardize that, um, I standardized that into z-scores so everything could be compared equally. Um, I did a principal component analysis, which basically, if you remember that social vulnerability, um, index takes it from right to left. So you end up with four encompassing factors that contain all of the 28 variables which I used. Um, and those four encompassing factors happen to be medical conditions, elderly and alone, socioeconomic status, and environmental pollution. Here's the index map um, which I created. Uh, the, the different colors represent um, 20% of each category, they're quantiles, so ranging from very low vulnerability to very high. Um, and at first glance, it does appear to be random. Um, but um, the top 40%, which includes moderately high vulnerability to very high vulnerability, takes up 31% of the geographic area of San Diego. The top five most vulnerable tracks are shown in the left graph here and are located downtown in urban areas. So again, it's hard to see if there is any correlation right now um, with space, but downtown does appear to pop out um, when looking at the top most vulnerable areas. So I then mapped homeless density. Um, three out of the five most populated census tracts um, happen to be in the top five most vulnerable as well. Um, so these maps can be updated as you get better data, um, but it should be taken with a grain of salt um, the process of counting um, is a little botched. I learned that they often count where they know where homeless people are. So a lot of regions are just not counted. So it's important to still account for those census tracts where they're not being counted when you're devising a policy. So when mapping heat and homeless, um, the red region represents that top 40% of vulnerability. The blue represents census tracts that have 10 or more homeless um, individuals that were counted. Um, and purple is where they meet. So 11% of census tracts fall at that intersection of high vulnerability and high homeless density. And then 54% of the um, tracts in blue that represent higher homeless uh, density fall in the areas of high vulnerability to heat. So more than half of tracks that have 10 or more individuals um, are experiencing this high heat vulnerability. So I did a spatial analysis, a geographic weighted regression, which aims to quantify that correlation between vulnerability and homeless density, and a spatial autocorrelation with high positive um, coefficients means that there's a high correlation between the two variables. So now you can really see that two areas really stick out downtown with higher values and northern San Diego by Oceanside. So this really puts into perspective how, you know, clustered distribution is 
um, especially downtown, which is very positive and very strong cor strongly correlated. So what does this all mean? Um, so the downtown area is most likely vulnerable due to its urbanization. Um, you know, urbanization exacerbates all of the factors involved in vulnerability. Um, homelessness is high downtown, probably due to um, existing resources and the ability to use um, services that are available. Um, I found that the highest effect on vulnerability is from those medical conditions and environmental conditions. And the relationship between homelessness and vulnerability is systematically clustered and not random. So what can we do? Um, access to information is not the same if you're homeless. Um, so post signs or message, message boards during a heat wave event to make sure that that message is going out to people that need it. Prioritize those areas with higher homeless in a detailed protocol. Um, provide and promote these services um, by offering free shuttles to cooling zones, you know, anything to help get them out of heat. Um, the biggest thing when dealing with homelessness is promoting this access to services. And it also, um, there's a chance to get better counts of who needs and receives services using a tally system. Also, um, the urban heat island effect is expected to worsen with climate change. So prioritize urban areas as well as desert regions because they heat up quickly. Urban shade cover can actually reverse the effect of uh, the urban heat island and save energy. So collaborations with carbon farming initiatives could prove to be beneficial and start to undo that systematic inequality that we see with urban areas. So in conclusion, um, break the stigma around homelessness. Um, prioritize the invisible groups by improving and promoting services. It will benefit the entire population if the most vulnerable are being taken care of. Um, recognize the needs of those who are vulnerable by organizing focus groups. Ask what they would benefit from during heat waves. And integrating and updating data, data from the homeless sector will streamline adaptation plans and make them more efficient. There remains a commitment to protect all citizens regardless of individual circumstances. And I'd like to thank my committee, um, my director, Corey, Mark, um, Risa, thank you for everything, and my cohort and my family and friends for everything. <laughs> and I will be taking questions. To, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you considered expanding the, um, uh, the, uh, this um, methodology to other cities and also um, not just looking at heat maps but cold maps um, for the alternate weathers? Oh, sorry, some uh, seasons. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think the, you know, the analysis can be applied to any region with any region's climate specific to that. Um, I focus on San Diego mostly because I'm here. Um, but I really think it's good for counties to have a tool that any city can use to try and promote those services. And I do think extreme cold is important. Um, but yeah, I get hot a lot, so I think I focused on heat more, so. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you.